welcome back. Now, the pandemic has laid bare just how fragile jobs and finances can be, especially among women in society. Well, today, a leading women's rights campaigner and former prominent banking executives have joined forces to make financial education accessible to every woman. I'm joined now by Jude Kelly and Olga Miller, who are the founders of Smart Purse. The platform recently received a half a million pound funding from angel investors. Welcome to you both. Jude, let me start with you. What made you think there was a gap in the market for this sort of service? Well, when I started the WOW Women of the World Festivals around the world, I realised that women were both poised to be incredibly influential on the, on the spending power of the world, and at the same time, very, very unconfident and marginalised in terms of their ability to play a big role, both in terms of their own finances and the finances of their country, their organisations, etc. And we wanted to change that. And we knew that the women were turned off by the usual practices of financial advisors and financial products because they didn't feel that they were speaking to women. And basically, they wanted a, a, a safe space where they could have proper education, learn proper skills, and make their own decisions around their own life choices, and that there wasn't such an independent educational learning space available. So we decided we would found one. Jude, very interesting that you say you don't think the financial services sector is speaking properly to women. I mean, financial services is a big catch-all expression. Do you have particular segments in mind? Are you talking banks, insurers, asset managers? Well, I mean, Olga, who's obviously my co-partner in this, was one of the big architects of uh, financial learning for women when she was at UBS. And I think we both agree that the, the sort of product-led style of a lot of the financial sector is not in keeping with the fact that most of us women actually organize our financial thinking around life events. You know, what's happening to us as a student, what's happening to us as a, a, a somebody getting married, what's happening to us when we have children, what's happening to us when we get divorced, retirement, all of these things, the kind of emotional framework around which we make our decisions are actually how we choose to spend our money. And this is the most important starting point for giving yourself reasons to become financially literate. Well, Olga, uh, let's bring you in. Uh, Jude just mentioned there you worked at uh, UBS. Do you, do you think that's she's been entirely fair there in terms of discussing the way that people, the industry addresses women? I think Jude is being absolutely fair. Um, one of the biggest challenges that we encountered when I was still working in banking and not with smartpers was that it is all rooted in the language. All these acronyms, abbreviations make very simple things sometimes extremely obscure and unclear. And that leads to the fact that a lot of the women that we have spoken to just felt this is not for me that people feel they have to be rich in order to rely on the help of a financial advisor, that people struggle, find the right information when they actually need it. And that is one of the reasons why we think with SmartPress we can do it differently um, to adopt different language and make the whole things more accessible. Now, Olga, you have a thousand members already. How many more do you need for this service to pay for itself? Oh, I think we need as many more members as we can get. Mind you, we are non-advertising-led, non-affiliation scheme. So basically, the only source of income is what people pay for the financial education in return for impartiality and in return for accessible content. So the more, the merrier will make us happy. But uh, are you overtly seeking out, Solga, to make a profit? Yes, we are a for-profit venture, um, not a charity. Um, that said, obviously, our financial education is highly, highly accessible. With eight pounds a month, it is as accessible as it can get, it's cheaper than a gym membership, because we want to reach exactly not just women that already have a lot of money, but make it um, an easy thing to use by every woman. So she can have access to the modern tools. She knows how to invest with a robo-advisor. So she she can basically make the most of her money, whether she owns a bank or just has a tiny piggy bank. Now, Jude, you pinpointed one of the problems there in terms of communication uh, with uh, women from the industry. Do you detect any signs of improvement? I mean, we've now got a, a female CEO at NatWest Group, uh, Alison Rose, of course, who we had on this programme yesterday. We've had Jane Fraser becoming CEO at Citibank, one of Wall Street's biggest banks. I mean, things may improve with more women bosses at the helm. They, they will. And the Rose report was very significant. And we have a, you know, the 30% club. And there are, there are fantastic women at the top of the banking industry and the finance industry. Inga Beale, first CEO of Lloyd's of London, was is on our advisory board. Um, so, I mean, I'm very optimistic 
about the role that women are going to play in changing the nature of these conversations. But I think the thing that we're really trying to, to say is that for the ordinary woman on the street, um, and, and that covers all kinds of classes, all kinds of backgrounds, actually finance has been historically something that they have been deliberately shut out of. And although that's changed, of course, it's still a pattern of behaviour that we need to break. Financial well-being is a kind of huge source of, of anxiety. And we want uh, companies and corporates to buy SmartPurse for their employees. We want basically SmartPurse to be available to all women. It's independent financial advice, independent learning modules. It's a toolbox. It's not because women are stupid. It's not because we don't understand things. It's because we approach things from a different direction and we want that to be factored in. And I, I, mean, I am very optimistic. I think that the world is changing, but with women being time poor, and with COVID having a disproportionate impact on women's finances, which it is because of part-time women, because of having to, uh, you know, do so much more of the caring, et cetera, et cetera. I think we all need together to make a big push for giving women greater financial stability, greater financial confidence. And we believe that Smart Purse, as an independent organisation, is going to be a fantastic toolkit for everybody. Jude, uh, we're very, very uh, short on time, but briefly, please, you made, you've spent most of your career in the theatre. How worried are you for the UK's theatre industry right now? Yeah, enormously. I mean, this is a sector which is not just about the arts, but about all the ancillary activities, the wig makers, the dressmakers, the makeup artists, the restaurants and the bars that serve the, the performing arts audiences as they're going in. You know, it's a massive ecosystem which is all in jeopardy. And although the government are making some very good statements, uh, I think there's about to be some announcements okay. in terms of... In terms of OK, Jude, Olga, right. good to see you both. Thanks for joining me.